Hey guys, so we are going to be looking at software. We're going to look at software today. We're going to break it down into two different sections, okay? So the first part is application software, and then the second part is system software. These are going to be two different videos. I'm going to give you an overview of to what they are about. So the first one is application software. What is application software for, or what does it let us do? What is the purpose of application software? Now, we might call them programs or apps, and here is the purpose. The first one, as you can see, is to accomplish tasks. To accomplish tasks, to be able to perform tasks on a computer system, that is the main purpose of an application, is to let us do something. We can also categorize various types of software, and you'll see that a little bit later in the video. We can produce output. The, the goal of performing tasks or accomplishing tasks on the computer is to then perform some sort of output or solve a problem of some kind, and these applications or programs we can only use within the operating system. Right, so we access them via an operating system. An application can't just run on its own. It has to have some sort of an operating system running it. Okay. When we look at system software, we're talking more about the GUI, okay, the GUI or graphical user interface. Utilities, utilities come bundled with the operating system, which allows us to perform certain tasks for maintenance or cleaning up the operating system or things like that. Hardware communication, the whole point of having a system software is to communicate with the hardware of the device or computer system that you are using. And then of course, running the operating system, looking after the overall security, the configuration of your operating system. Okay, and that's what system software is for. But let's move on. We're going to be looking at application software. So here we go. First, the first kind of software that we're going to be looking at, and here's where I'm talking about the categorizing and grouping, is word processing software. Word processing software, we have not just Microsoft Word, as you can see over there. We also have another one, another one, another one. And you're probably wondering, like, whoa, I have not seen these before. I didn't know there was anything else other than Microsoft Word. Well, there is. Let's have a look. We have a Microsoft Word. That's the icon there. Google Docs. You do know Google Docs. I'm sure you do. Everybody knows Google Docs. And then we have Libra. Office Writer, Libre Office Writer, and Open Office Writer. So Libre Office and Open Office are two open source versions of Office software. So if you can't afford Microsoft Office for some reason, as a student it's free, but maybe you're not a student anymore, there's Libre Office and there's Open Office as well. Hmm, pretty cool. Then we have spreadsheet software. Spreadsheet software. Now we already know Microsoft Excel. We know that there's Google Sheets. So those two are very, very similar. And then of course, LibreOffice. It's called Calc. Guess what? Open Office is called Calc as well. The reason is these two are open source. So they're they're both very similar because they're based on the same code. They just have different uh, flavors, so to speak. Okay, and you can have a look at that if you download it and play around with that. Presentation software, Microsoft PowerPoint, which we know, creating slides. That's what I've created here for you. Google Slides, very nice. LibreOffice Impress, it sounds good, doesn't it? And OpenOffice Impress, I know, it sounds pretty cool. There we go. Then we have a database software. Yes, database software, Microsoft Access, which my students are loving, just by the way. And if you're watching this and you haven't done Access yet, you will love it. It's actually not that bad. Moving on, moving on. Microsoft Access, LibreOffice Base. Sort of like from database, I suppose. OpenOffice Base. You'll notice there wasn't a Google one here. I couldn't find one. So how weird is that? Then we have desktop publishing software, also known as DTP. So when you hear someone saying DTP, they mean desktop publishing. That's like Microsoft Publisher. Okay, this is where you can create things like certificates and flyers, brochures, adverts, posters. Okay, so you're designing stuff. Okay, Inkscape, lovely open source program. Adobe InDesign, not open, not open source. Mucho, mucho money. Okay, got to pay for that one. And Scribus, also open source. Very, very cool DTP software options there. Design software, so like graphic design, for example. Here we have a couple that you may or may not know. LibreOffice has one called Draw. OpenOffice has one called Draw. Then we have Adobe Photoshop. Everybody knows that. Even the term Photoshop has been used as a verb. Okay, like, hey, Photoshop this. And then GIMP. 
Graphics Image Manipulation Program, I think it stands for. And that's what GIMP is. That's a free open source one. If you can't afford Adobe Photoshop, GIMP is like, it's actually just like Photoshop, but it's free. It's also a bit of a learning curve. I tried it out, man. I get lost. But anyway, I'm not a designer. Gaming and entertainment. Absolutely. We know these. Netflix. Who doesn't know Netflix? Okay, Netflix, Steam, hosting of a lot and a lot of different games that you can play online. And then there's A10.com. Also, lots and lots of games you can play online. That's gaming and entertainment or leisure, as we can call it as well. Now, what do we have here? Here we have a lounge suite. And you're thinking, what the heck are you talking about now? A lounge suite? The reason is I want you to focus on that word suite. S-U-I-T-E. It's not suit. Please, it's not a lounge suit. Who wears a lounge suit? Nobody. And we have suite. The word suite means collection. It's a collection. So there you've got like one, two, three different couches and chairs. It's a collection. It's a suite of things. Now, when we talk about suites in terms of uh, applications, we have things like Microsoft Office, Libra Office. The, that is a collection. Microsoft Office has got Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, Publisher, Access, and more, actually. And all of those things fit under the Microsoft Office banner. Same thing with LibreOffice, okay? They all have their different um, applications, and they fit under LibreOffice. It's a suite, a collection. So when we talk about Office, we're actually talking about the collection of applications in one. And it's actually, this is what we do. We buy the suite or the license to use the sweet. Okay, I've said sweet enough because I feel like I want to eat something. Okay, where were we? Oh yes, so now, with all of this application software, let's just recap what the purpose is, okay, of application software. Why do we use programs? What for? Again, remember we said to accomplish tasks, they can be categorized, like we've just gone through all the categories now. So go back and replay the video and watch those categories, okay? To produce output, okay? Uh, solve problems, for example. Accessed via the operating system. So that is everything about application software. In the next video, we're going to look at system software. Thanks for watching.